ancient and medieval weapons. Forged in the fires of innovation, wielded with precision, and designed for one purpose, to conquer. Explore the brutality and artistry of history's deadliest arms. Number 20. Shokunu. The repeating crossbow, known as the Shokunu, is a remarkable weapon with a rich history dating back to ancient China, as early as the 4th century BC. Archaeological findings have provided evidence of its existence during this time. However, it was during the later years, around 181 to 234 AD, that a renowned military advisor named Shuga Liang made significant improvements to this ingenious device. His modifications allowed for a version that could astonishingly fire up to three bolts at once, turning the battlefield into a deadly zone. But what set the Shukanu apart was its rapid-fire capabilities. Some versions of this weapon could unleash a barrage of 10 bolts in quick succession, making it a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield. While it may have been less accurate than single-shot crossbows and had a shorter range compared to longbows, its unparalleled rate of fire more than made up for these limitations. Interestingly, despite its effectiveness, the repeating crossbow had a unique role in Chinese history. It was not primarily considered a military weapon, Instead, it found its place as a non-military tool, often wielded by women to defend households against robbers or for hunting purposes. This dual nature of the Chokanu adds an intriguing layer to its already fascinating story. Number 19. Shuriken The Shuriken, often referred to as the Ninja Star, is a renowned Japanese weapon with a mystique that has captured the imagination of popular culture. Its unique specifications make it a fascinating piece of weaponry. Shuriken typically measure between 5 to 8.5 inches, 13 to 21 centimeters in length, and weigh anywhere from 1.3 to 5.3 ounces, or 35 to 150 grams. These deadly tools are crafted from heavy-grade steel, ensuring their durability and lethality. Shuriken are distinctively designed as pointed stars with various edges and styles, the Hira Shuriken being the most recognizable. This star-shaped weapon is specifically designed for concealed use, primarily for self-defense rather than direct assault. The Shuriken's sharp-edged construction, often made from metal or coins, made it a formidable choice for close encounters. What made the Shuriken particularly lethal was its ability to strike like an invisible swordsman. When thrown with precision, it could generate an attack that seemed almost supernatural. This small yet dangerous weapon, originating from Japan, holds a storied history dating back over a century. In some instances, shuriken were enhanced further by soaking their edges in poison or even animal feces, introducing the risk of bacterial infection to wounds inflicted on opponents. This added a sinister dimension to their already deadly reputation. The mastery of shuriken was taught as part of martial arts, and it was an integral component of the ninja's arsenal for over a century. Surprisingly, it wasn't just the ninja who utilized this weapon. Even the samurai and Ashigaru soldiers found practical uses for it. Number 18. The Zweihander The Zweihander, a formidable weapon that stands out in the annals of history, is arguably one of the largest swords ever crafted. This colossal blade was wielded by Swiss and German infantrymen, designed for combat against formidable adversaries like pikes. The sheer dimensions of this Y-hander are awe-inspiring, with a length exceeding 70 inches, or 180 centimeters. Depending on its size and purpose, it weighed between 3 to 14 pounds, 1.4 to 6.4 kilos, making it a true behemoth on the battlefield. While the larger variants of these Y-Hander were often reserved for ceremonial purposes, these weapons had their place in war as well. They were employed in combat against halberds and pikes, enabling soldiers to engage their foes from a considerable distance. One unique feature of some Y-Handers was the ricasso, a portion of the blade left unsharpened. Positioned above the main guard, it allowed for close-quarter combat tactics, offering an advantage in tight spaces. These colossal swords often featured a secondary, smaller guard protruding from the blade, adding an extra layer of protection. Those who wielded these Y-Hander were highly esteemed, receiving twice the pay of their counterparts. 
Notably, many of these skilled swordsmen were part of a famous mercenary group known as the Langschnechte. As time progressed, the use of Zweihanders dwindled in actual warfare, gradually becoming relegated to ceremonial roles. They were ultimately supplanted by more efficient weapons like pikes, which could be handled with greater ease and effectiveness on the battlefield. Number 17. Hypaspist The Hypaspist, a unique entry on this list, sets itself apart as not a weapon, but rather an elite infantry soldier who played a pivotal role in the army of the legendary Alexander the Great. Translated from Greek, Hypapist means shield-bearer, reflecting the primary role of these warriors. Hypaspists were renowned for their exceptional qualities, encompassing strength, agility, and unwavering courage. While they were not known for a specific weapon, they were formidable in their own right due to their training and discipline. A select few among the Hypapists had the distinguished honor of serving as the king's personal bodyguards. These elite soldiers were known as the Silver Shields, a name derived from their use of silver shields. Interestingly, the Silver Shields often comprised elderly warriors, yet their reputation was one of respect and fear, earned through their unparalleled skill and battle-hardened experience. Number 16. Dua The Dua, an ancient Chinese weapon, stands out as one of the most unconventional and intriguing arms in history. In Chinese, the term Dua translates to claw or animal feet, which perfectly encapsulates the essence of this weapon. Characterized by its distinctive design, the Dua features a long handle equipped with a claw-like appendage adorned with sharp blades along its edges. This weapon served a unique purpose. It was primarily employed to disarm opponents by ripping away their weapons and shields, leaving them vulnerable and defenseless. The Dua's versatility was remarkable, as it could not only disarm, but also inflict harm. It had the potential to impale flesh and ruthlessly tear it from an adversary, causing significant damage. Furthermore, if wielded skillfully, the Dua could be used to pull a mounted soldier from their horse, disrupting enemy formations. What added to the weapon's lethality was its weight, with the Iron Dua carrying sufficient heft to deliver deadly blows through bludgeoning. However, the sharp claws elevated its danger, creating numerous openings for attacks and exposing opponents to multifaceted risks. Number 15. Shotel The Shotel, often referred to as the Sickle Sword, traces its origins back to ancient Ethiopia around 980 BC. This distinctive weapon measured approximately 101 centimeters, making it an imposing and formidable choice on the battlefield. What set the Shotel apart was its uniquely menacing appearance and its capacity to inflict harm with the slightest touch. Crafted in a manner that made it challenging for opponents to block with either another sword or a shield, the Shotel was a favorite among both mounted and unmounted soldiers. The design of the Shotel was optimized for targeting an adversary's vital organs, such as the kidneys and lungs, with its sharp and curved blades. However, its exceptional lethality came with its own set of challenges. Due to its length and shape, the Chotel proved difficult to wield effectively. Furthermore, the process of extracting the sword from its scabbard could be time-consuming and potentially hazardous to the swordsman. Characterized by a blade that was approximately 40 inches in length, the Chotel's double-edged, flat design diverged from typical swordplay techniques. With a simple wooden hilt, this weapon was not primarily intended for cutting or slicing, but rather for delivering precise stabs to critical targets. Number 14. Spartan Hoplon Shield The Spartan Hoplon Shield, also known as the Aspis, is an iconic symbol of Spartan military prowess. These distinctive shields were characterized by their circular design and were an integral part of a Spartan warrior's armament. Crafted from wood with an outer layer of protective bronze, the Spartan Hoplon Shield was a formidable piece of equipment, weighing in at around 30 pounds and measuring 3 feet in diameter. However, what truly set it apart was its unique method of handling. The shield featured a handle at the edge, which was further supported by a leather strap in the center. This innovative design allowed Spartan soldiers greater freedom of movement for their arms during the heat of battle. 
Interestingly, the size and buoyant properties of the Hoplon shield made it multifunctional. Not only did it serve as a defensive tool, but its weight and blunt nature also made it suitable for bludgeoning and even killing adversaries. This dual-purpose nature of the shield provided Spartans with a tactical advantage, allowing them to surprise their foes both defensively and offensively. Number 13. Flaming Arrows Flaming arrows, often referred to as fire arrows, were a potent thermal weapon employed by numerous ancient civilizations throughout history. From the Romans and Assyrians to the Judeans and Chinese, these fiery projectiles found utility in various military strategies. The concept of fire arrows took a significant leap forward during the Song Dynasty in China, where they invented a more advanced version. Instead of merely setting the arrowhead ablaze, the Chinese devised a method to attach rockets to the arrows. This innovation added a whole new dimension to the weapon's effectiveness. Japanese and Korean cultures also experimented with various forms of flaming arrows, each tailored to their specific needs. The simplest design featured oil or resin-soaked cloth tied just below the arrowhead, proving highly effective against wooden structures. In the case of the Chinese fire arrows, a gunpowder-filled pouch was attached to the shaft, serving as a propellant. These arrow assemblies were launched from specialized platforms, often in cylinders or boxes capable of holding up to 1,000 arrows. Propelled by gunpowder, these arrows could achieve a formidable range of around 1,000 feet. Number 12. The Fire Lance the Fire Lance, an ingenious creation hailing from ancient China, bore a striking resemblance to a spear, but harbored a fiery secret. This innovative weapon was designed to launch projectiles filled with the potent force of gunpowder. In its earliest incarnation, the Fire Lance featured a spear-like shaft with a bamboo tube affixed to it. This tube held a payload of sand, serving a dual purpose on the battlefield. Not only could it blind the enemy, but it also provided a tactical advantage in close combat scenarios. As technology progressed, the Fire Lance underwent remarkable transformations. Poisoned darts and shrapnel were integrated into its arsenal, increasing its lethality. To withstand the force generated by these explosive projectiles, the original paper housing gave way to more durable metal. The evolution of the Fire Lance spurred the development of other weapons, including the formidable Fire Tube, a primitive but effective flamethrower. In later iterations, the addition of poisonous chemicals to the explosive mix ensured that the enemy faced not only fiery destruction, but the insidious effects of toxic substances, making the Fire Lance a truly fearsome instrument of warfare. Number 11. Wave-Bladed Sword the wave-bladed sword, originating in Germany around the 15th century, is often referred to as the flame-bladed sword or flamberge. This distinctive weapon measured approximately 41 centimeters in length and demanded the use of both hands to wield effectively. Its intriguing name, flame-bladed, stemmed from its remarkable ability to produce flames and vibrations during combat engagements. The thin, elongated, and exceptionally sharp blades not only inflicted grievous harm upon adversaries, but also generated vibrations through the undulating motion of the blade itself. These swords were primarily the domain of highly trained and experienced swordsmen. Among the various iterations of the wave-bladed sword, one of the most renowned was the two-handed flame blade sword, known as the Flammerschnort. This weapon held a dominant position during the Renaissance era, claiming numerous lives on the battlefield and providing its wielders with a formidable advantage over their opponents. Number 10. Maduva The Maduva, originating in ancient India, was also commonly known as the Maru, or Fakir's Horns. This unique weapon was specifically designed for fakirs, Hindu, and Muslim ascetics, and mendicants who were not permitted to carry conventional weapons. Initially crafted from two antelope horns connected by a crossbar, the two horns pointed in opposite directions, making it exceptionally effective for stabbing and attacking adversaries. Over time, the Maduvu underwent modifications and began to be manufactured using steel, adding a defensive dimension to its utility. The practice of this specially designed weapon is still active as a martial art form in India, known as Salambam where deer horns are now commonly used, and it goes by the name Man Kambu Madu. 
The madu, an ancient Indian weapon, typically featured black buck horns pointing in opposite directions, joined by a crossbar that also served as a handle. Some variations included the addition of a shield for defensive purposes. In later years, the weapon evolved to be made out of steel, primarily originating in South India and being employed mainly for defensive maneuvers to fend off counterattacks, although its pointed horns could also be used for offensive stabbing and thrusting. Number 9. Banak The Banak, a renowned weapon originating in India, is also referred to as the Va-Nak, which translates to Tiger's Claw. This distinctive weapon takes the shape of a claw, featuring four to five curved blades fixed to a glove or a crossbar, providing a means for the user's fingers to grasp it securely. The crossbar is equipped with two holes intended to support the thumb and the pinky finger, while the rest of the structure fits against the palm. The sharp blades are designed for slashing an opponent's skin and muscles, making it an incredibly perilous weapon when mounted on the knuckles. Legend has it that the claws were dipped in poison extracted from a poisoned tiger and employed by the Rajputs for assassinations during their early days. Emperor Shivaji is credited with the first recorded use of the Banak to defeat Afzal Khan, a Mughal general and the ruler of Bishapur. Number 8. Steam Cannon Archimedes, as documented by both Plutarch and Leonardo da Vinci, is believed to have conceived a steam-powered device that had the capability to rapidly launch projectiles. In this ingenious design, a cannon would have been heated using sun-focusing mirrors, while the projectiles themselves would have been hollow, filled with an incendiary fluid composed of a mixture likely containing sulfur, bitumen, pitch, and calcium oxide. Drawing inspiration from da Vinci's sketches, students at MIT successfully constructed a functional steam cannon. The shells propelled from this remarkable cannon achieved an astounding velocity of 670 miles per hour, 1,080 kilometers per hour, surpassing the kinetic energy of a bullet fired from an M2 machine gun. These cannons, attributed to Archimedes, would have theoretically had a range of approximately 150 meters. However, it's worth noting that there is some skepticism surrounding the existence of these cannons. They would have been positioned on city walls, likely on wooden platforms, making the use of their highly flammable incendiary fluid an extremely hazardous endeavor. Additionally, there is the possibility that the mixture might have exploded upon firing, rather than upon reaching its intended target. Number 7. The Claw of Archimedes the Claw of Archimedes was a remarkable crane-like device employed as a defensive weapon during the Second Punic War in 214 BC, most notably in the defense of the city of Syracuse. This ingenious device featured a jointed beam mounted on a rotating vertical beam or platform. At the end of this beam, there was a substantial grappling hook, often referred to as an iron hand. This hook was suspended by a chain and balanced at the other end by a sliding counterweight. The operation of the claw was as follows. It would be lowered down from the defensive walls of a city or fortification onto an enemy ship, where the grappling hook would attach itself to the vessel. Then, the claw would hoist the ship upwards before releasing it, causing the ship to plummet back into the water. This abrupt motion would typically throw the ship off balance, often resulting in its capsizing. These machines played a pivotal role in the defense of Syracuse during the Roman Republic's attack on the city. When the Romans, under General Marcus Claudius Marcellus, launched a nighttime assault with a fleet of 60 ships, Archimedes' claws were deployed effectively. They managed to sink numerous Roman ships and sow confusion among the attacking fleet. When combined with Archimedes' other inventions, such as his advanced catapults, the defensive efforts of Syracuse were highly successful. Number 6. The Haladi The Haladi is a fascinating weapon originating from India and Syria, and it was most notably associated with the Rajput warriors. This unique weapon was crafted between the 18th and 19th centuries and measured approximately 22 centimeters in length. The Haladi's defining feature is its double-bladed design. Two double-edged blades are attached to a single handle positioned in the middle. This configuration allowed for a thrusting action that could efficiently cut down adversaries. The slight curvature of the blades made them well-suited for both parrying and slashing. 
Some variations of the Haladi featured an additional metal band attached to the handle, resembling a knuckle duster. This knuckle duster had another blade or spike attached to it, serving a dual purpose for slicing and stabbing. The Haladi held great significance in Rajput culture, not only as a combat weapon, but also in various ceremonies and rituals. Its unique design, with two blades and the potential addition of a knuckle duster, made it a versatile and distinctive weapon. Number 5. Kopesh The Kopesh, commonly referred to as a sickle sword, has its origins in ancient Egypt, dating back to the Bronze Age around 1500 BC. This unique weapon typically measured between 50 to 60 centimeters in length, and its weight varied based on the metal used in its construction. The Kopesh held great symbolic significance in ancient Egypt, often representing the gods and the power of the pharaoh. In numerous ancient depictions, the pharaoh is portrayed holding the Kopesh, and devotees are seen offering it to him. The Kopesh has a distinctive sickle shape, with its inner portion designed for disarming enemies by hooking their weapons and limbs, while the curved outer edge was sharp and used for attacking or harming opponents. This weapon was not common in Egypt, as daggers and short swords were more prevalent. The Kopesh featured a thick, crescent-shaped blade, with the inside of the hook remaining unsharpened, while the outer part had a single cutting edge. It could also serve as a hook and a bludgeoning tool. The Kopesh was typically crafted from materials like bronze or iron, and was occasionally found in the tombs of pharaohs. Number 4. Urami the Urami, also known as Chutabal, has its origins in Tamalakam, which corresponds to modern-day Kerala, and dates back to around the 6th century BCE. This unique weapon was an integral part of Kalari Payatu, an ancient Indian martial art form that is among the oldest known fighting styles. The Urami found its primary use in one-on-one -on -one combat situations. The weapon was crafted by attaching multiple blades to a single handle in a flexible manner. The blades had sharp edges, making them highly effective and capable of inflicting severe damage with just a slight touch. The Orami stands out as one of the most dangerous weapons due to its unique design and characteristics. It required exceptional skill to wield effectively, as it posed a significant risk to the swordsman if not handled properly. Number 3. Roman Scissor The Roman Scissor, with its origins dating back to around 100 AD in ancient Rome, was primarily wielded by a group of gladiators known as the Scissors during their battles. These gladiators were specifically equipped with this unique weapon to combat opponents from the Retarius class, who were armed with nets and tridents. The weapon featured a distinctive design, consisting of two main parts. At one end, there was a long tube that served as both a handle and a protective arm guard. At the other end, a cylindrical-shaped pipe extended, culminating in a crescent-shaped blade. The gladiators would insert their arm into the long tube, which provided both a grip and protection. This tube also served as a defensive tool to block the attacks of their opponents. The sharp, crescent-shaped blade was used for offensive maneuvers, allowing these scissors to engage and subdue their adversaries. This unique combination of features made the Roman Scissor a versatile and lethal weapon, capable of both offense and defense. Number 2. Qatar The Qatar, originating from the Jayanagar Empire in southern India during the 14th century, is a unique and lethal weapon, often referred to as the Bundi Dagger or a Push Dagger. This weapon gained notoriety as a tool for single-shot assassinations, making it one of the most dangerous weapons of its time. The Qatar played a prominent role in Indian martial arts, particularly among the Tamil infantry units known as Kalatapadai. Its design is characterized by a sharp, knife-like blade with an H-shaped handle. To wield the Qatar effectively, the wielder would grasp the handle using their middle and index fingers. The blades of the Qatar varied in shape, with some being straight and others curved. Regardless of the blade's shape, they were all exceptionally sharp and designed primarily for stabbing. The Qatar's effectiveness extended to breaking through enemy shield walls and armor, making it a formidable weapon on the battlefield. 
In addition to its combat applications, the qatar held cultural significance and was sometimes used in various ceremonies and rituals. Many considered this weapon to be sacred, reflecting its deep-rooted influence in southern Indian culture. Number 1. Archimedes Heat Ray The legend of Archimedes Heat Ray is a fascinating tale from ancient history, though its actual existence remains a topic of debate. According to ancient writings, Archimedes, the renowned Greek mathematician and inventor, was said to have devised a remarkable invention that could set enemy ships on fire during the siege of Syracuse. The concept behind this invention involved using large mirrors made of polished metal to concentrate and focus the sun's rays onto enemy ships, effectively causing them to catch fire. Historical accounts suggest that this ingenious tactic resulted in the destruction of numerous ships. In modern times, attempts to recreate this ancient weapon have yielded mixed results. Researchers from MIT managed to set a replica Roman ship on fire, but it was stationary, raising questions about the practicality and effectiveness of such a device in a real naval battle. Furthermore, skepticism surrounds the authenticity of the heat ray's existence, as descriptions of its use only emerged around 350 years after the siege of Syracuse. Additionally, there is no documented evidence of similar weapons being used in other historical contexts. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn more about fascinating historical topics, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and stay tuned for our next journey back through time.